guys, Jameson Redding here with the Road Trip Angler. And I wanna do a quick comparison video between a standard hard shell roto molded plastic fishing kayak and an inflatable fishing kayak. I have here a couple of inflatables from NRS and I've done reviews of both of those and I've also compared those two. And I also have the Kusa X, which I've also done a review of on my channel. Now this isn't really comparing specific model to specific model, but I wanted to talk about the benefits of an inflatable versus a hard shell and vice versa and kind of who and where I think they make the most sense. To start with, weight is going to be a number one contender when you're talking about the differences. An inflatable kayak is going to be much lighter than a hard shell fishing kayak. There are lightweight kayaks out there made of different kinds of composites, but specifically talking about fishing kayaks, in general, they're rotomolded plastic, they're wider, they're stable, they're designed to handle a lot of gear and a large capacity, so they tend to weigh more. And I would say on the low end, around 70 pounds, and on the high end when we're talking about pedal drive kayaks, you could be looking at upwards of 150 pounds. Where an inflatable kayak is gonna be somewhere between 30 and 50 pounds, which is a significant difference. The other big thing that sets these apart is how you store them and transport them to and from the water. While you can put one of these on a roof rack, I would say it's gonna be a little bit of a win for the inflatable kayak because you can pack those down, put them in a case, throw them in the trunk of a car in the back seat, plus you could store them in a closet. Whereas a full-size kayak like this, well, you can't fold it in half and unless you're gonna cut it into pieces, you really need something uh, as long as the kayak to store it in or haul it in. So typically a truck bed or a trailer and if you're gonna store it inside, you'll need a garage because these boats tend to be starting around 11 feet long and could be up to around 14 or 15 feet long. As far as the materials that these kayaks are made out of, one is kind of a, a PVC type of vinyl material that you're gonna inflate and the other is rotomolded plastic. And rotomolded plastic is gonna have to take the win when it comes to durability between these, in my opinion. I do believe that these inflatable kayaks are very durable and they will take a beating. I mean, people have been running whitewater in rafts for a very long time. They've been fishing out of rafts for a very long time. So they're very durable. However, leaving one inflated when the sun's out is not something I have to worry about uh, when it comes to the standard rotomolded style fishing kayak. It's not going to explode. It's not gonna really expand. I don't have to worry about hooks puncturing it. And and I have to drag this a very long time to actually wear it out. So I don't want to sound like the inflatable kayak is not durable because it is very durable, but I have to give the edge to the standard style rotomolded plastic kayak like the Kusa X here. The other thing that I have to give an advantage to is when it comes to rigging, I feel like you have a lot more options. Most fishing kayaks these days come with a lot of gear track involved somewhere on the boat. This one has the tri-track from Jackson and it's just very easy to put as much rigging as you want, where you could add a lot of accessories to the inflatable kayak, but you're gonna have to glue different bases on. And while these two inflatables, the Pike and the Cuda from NRS, do come with some bases, you're still limited to very short sections of track versus a lot of the fishing kayaks now have 12 inch or even longer track on them, and you can mount really anything. Now, when we start talking about versatility, that's really a toss up because there's something to be said about being able to pack a kayak in and inflate it once you get to the water. Also, there's something to be said about that weight and just the fact that you can store these things in a lot of places. And yes, they can be used virtually on any waterway when it comes to the inflatables. But the flip side of that is this type of kayak, the rotomolded kayak, it may inspire a little more confidence when it comes to getting in bigger water and not having to worry about accidentally puncturing one of the tubes and having to patch that while you're on the water, but they're not impervious to having problems. They can crack if you hit them wrong, or over time, if you leave them outside and the sun breaks down the plastic, you can have issues. But I do feel like, again, from a durability standpoint, which also adds to the versatility, this kayak may take the advantage there, but I don't know. It depends on your style of fishing, really. If you're traveling a lot and you need a place to store things, or if you just want a lighter kayak, the inflatable may be a great option. 
If you're spending a lot of time and you're rigging your boat all the way out and you're going to fish tournaments in big open water, then probably the roto molded kayak is the better option. One more advantage that I would say is to the roto molded side, and this is really depending on the model of kayak you get, is that a lot of the kayaks now have a high low feature and a trimmable seat. With most inflatables, you don't get that option. You just kind of have the seat where it's at and you might be able to move it forward and aft a little bit, but high low is really not an option. Now I think that these two kayaks on either side of this Kusa X, the Pike Pro and the Kuda 126 from NRS are probably the best examples out there of a purpose-built fishing kayak that's also an inflatable and they're the best comparison when it comes to this. And again, it's really just depends on what you're doing with the boat and where you're using it and what your storage and versatility needs are. As I mentioned before, one of the other kind of advantages to the rotomolded plastic style kayak is typically with the sit on tops, you have access to the interior storage. So if you need to pack gear inside, you can do that. And lastly, I feel like there are a lot more options when it comes to the standard roto-molded fishing kayaks out on the market. I mean, really there's not a lot of inflatable kayaks designed specifically for fishing. So it limits your choices and being able to find the right kayak to dial in for your needs and the type of water that you're gonna be fishing could become more of a struggle. I think these two options on either side of this boat, the Pike Pro and the Kuda 126 from NRS, are probably some of the best options out there. And they will give some rotomolded kayaks a run for their money in a lot of ways. So you really just need to think about what you're doing and where you're fishing and see what works best. One of the things that that also can affect though is that inflatables tend to sit on top of the water and these kind of sit more in the water, which means that the inflatable is gonna be very nimble, very easy to maneuver, and very easy to get up to speed. But it's also gonna be affected by wind more than a traditional rotomolded kayak. So if you're gonna be in open water a lot with a lot of wind, and that's where you primarily fish, this may be a better option for you, versus this may be a better option for you if you're going into smaller creeks and rivers where you need to attain up river and you need something that you can maneuver very easily and is lightweight to get that access. So the big question is which one's right for you? And that's a hard one to answer. I mean, for me, I have certain places that the inflatable is a clear win and I have certain areas of, that I fish that the standard roto molded kayak is gonna be the clear winner. For you, it could be completely different. So you really need to go out and paddle these craft, find a dealer that has them and compare them. But what I will say is if you are someone specifically that has storage problems or just you need something that you can store very easily in a closet or transportation wise, you want something that is easier, lightweight and can pack down, the inflatable option may be the best option. Also, for me, it's all about access. And there are certain places where hands down, dragging a 31 pound kayak through the woods or carrying it to a launch location is a clear advantage. Also, when I am attaining up river, I want it something that's on top of the water, not down in the current, and is easy for me to get out and drag across the shoals and the inflatable winds in that category. From a rigging standpoint, it's a clear winner that you can do a whole lot more rigging, put a lot more electronics, you have usually more gear track, just more options, period, with this standard kind of rotomolded plastic kayak. So you gotta do some thinking and think about where you're gonna be primarily fishing, what type of water, and what your situation is when it comes to transportation and being able to load and unload a heavy versus a lightweight boat. But the cool thing is, you have options. With these boats from NRS, Jackson, and a lot of other manufacturers out there and the sport of kayak fishing growing, you don't have to settle for a kayak that's not right for you. So be sure to get out there and try them out. I have full reviews of both of these inflatable kayaks and this Kusa X on my channel. So check those out in the description. I also compare the Kuda to the Pike and that video will help you decide between a sit inside and a sit on top inflatable kayak. And as always, thanks for watching and for more tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe. Road Trip Angler would like to thank our global partners for helping support the mission to get people outside and on the water.